Good evening. Welcome to uh, Live at Trapdoor Conversations that we're having with the bands and artists that have been playing with us at, uh, for us here in the studio. Uh, tonight we've got Paddy Weld from Dust Radio. He's uh, they The first video was released today, was it not? It was. So you were in about two weeks ago. Yes. Doing the usual four songs and uh, all live in the studio and uh how did you find that experience yeah it was really good it was um it was nice to be able to do it live and you know kind of capture that the way that you would have some kind of dynamics with each with the rest of the band yeah you know in, in terms of being in one room you know and just being able to kind of play off each other a little bit it was nice to do it that way um, like yeah, because it's still you know, and especially with this lineup as well, it's still um, it's quite fresh. Yeah, we we gig. Mm. It's we we started off as a duo basically, and yeah. then we've been gigging for quite a while as a trio, with myself, uh, Tom on guitar and Stu on bass. So we've done quite a few, quite a lot of gigging like that over the last couple of years. Um, but Rob. Uh, on the drums is relatively new to the lineup, so it was good to be able to do something like that in the room. Yeah, and yeah. and, and uh, you know, kind of just play live as it were and have that have that recorded. One of the great pleasures for me of that session was seeing how things developed over, you know, that the the process of playing it and then listening to it and going, ah, right, this is how we need to reshape it in order to make it sit right. And that, yeah. that was really good. And, yeah. And the way that everyone responded and pulled their weight in that situation is always really good. Yeah, definitely. It's good to have that kind of, you know, that kind of feedback and, and just to be kind of maybe pushed slightly in, in a direction that maybe you might not have thought of being pushed or or, yeah. or anything like that. It's all, That's it. yeah, yeah. it's all helpful, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah isn't it? And, the, yeah. and I mean, uh, you know, the, the playing was great. And so... Thank you. For people to be able to be flexible with what they were doing, but still play something that was in the pocket, yeah, it was really good. Try, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's come out it's come out well. I think so. Yeah. So um, today um, we released Siren Song. Yes, that's right. And so uh, that, these are all original com songs. Yeah. And what's that about? Is that a uh, that particular track, yeah, um, it was off of the first EP that myself and Tom recorded, which is already um, two, more than two years ago, I think. Yeah, it was, it was in the in the mists of lockdown. <laughs> so yeah, my, yeah. My, my time scales are slightly skewed. Oh, no, like nobody, everyone, nobody can remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last four years, and, and that was it's kind of um, it's a pretty it's a pretty simple it's arrangement. Um, wanted something that was a little bit it's almost got a little bit of a heart attack and vine kind of mm. kind of rhythm to it yeah but lyrically um, it's I guess yeah I guess it's just got that kind of theme to the theme of the siren yeah know? yeah and, they, and, and and that yeah Ulysses comes yeah. out again <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All, all of that stuff you know yeah brilliant well I mean they're, they're all great songs and I sat there listening to them, thinking, "These are, you know, the sure these are covers of something because I've heard them quite a few times now. They've been out a little while, yeah, and sort of trying to keep up with what you're doing. And I've heard them, and they and they sound like songs from an established repertoire, of, you know. And that that's that's, that's, that's good. really good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's good if if that's how they're coming across. And that's, definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah, that's good. So how did the, how did you first start? Dust, the Dust Radio, and it's just two of you. Yeah, there was, um, to, yeah, to, to, to keep it short, uh, I was looking to start a duo when I was living in Stockport. Um, just something simple and something that could get, that two of us could get out gigging quickly. Yeah. Was, was the kind of, was the idea. Mm. So I kind of put an ad out for, for anybody that just kind of might be like minded. Uh, found Tom, who's, who's Stockport local. And the like I said, the idea was right. Let's chuck a set together, and we'll just start gigging as soon as we can. And but that was like February, twenty twenty. Right. So 
the timing was obviously awful. Um, <laughs> there were so many things. Yeah. And yeah, so then we had to kind of rethink. We had to rethink it then, as to how we could keep making music. So we started. We thought we would start recording original material instead. Mm. Yeah. So it sort of became a, a sort of a. It was kind of born a circumstance, really. Yeah, put something together to get out there, but then of course you couldn't get out yeah, there. So exactly. You, that, that, that being creative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was good because yeah, it, right. it kind of forced it into something else. And then we we remained as a duo for quite a while, like I was just saying. Mm. And it's gradually, it's organically sort of expanded a little bit. And now it's, yeah. it's in its current sort of full band form. It, yeah, it's great to see it. I think there's the 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 sort of new opportunities for space and like those group those those great groups that he puts down on guitar mm. you know i mean that's that, that's fantastic and being able to stretch out a bit from those cuz you know you can hear that he's been holding that thing yeah. together for so long yeah yeah that it's I mean, really in the groove you know i mean it's great it must have been a pleasure to yeah, totally. play i mean it's it's been play with that for yeah you know it's obviously as you'll know it's like Tom was holding a lot down when there was yeah. just two of us, yeah. um, as well as lots of you know kind of stuff with his feet as well as pedals, and he was kind of the, <laughs> he, had the, he had the stomp going as well. So right. there, was, there was a yeah. lot that he was kind of you know spinning some plates there. Yeah. Um, so I think on the one hand it's good because it's kind of established that quite yeah, yeah. you know that kind of locked it's in kind of groove. For, yeah. yeah, but now he gets to stand up and, and play yeah. lead, lead guitar, you know, yeah, and have somebody else do the. Yeah, Somebody he's got else. some good licks as well. You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Um. So the. I mean, we like we should disclose our former connections and you're that you're a former Crosscut Saw member. Yeah. Um. That was that was how long were you in Crosscut Saw? Uh, that, best part of three years. It was, was three years. Yeah. Yeah. It was about. Um. It was about late 2015, I think. Until about late 2018, yeah. just before we went to the States. That's right, so you then went to the States, you yeah. went and spent a year in New Orleans? Mm. Yeah. And what what happened over there? That sounds incredible. I haven't really um, gr grilled you for good stories about New Orleans. Yeah, well, it was great. I mean, that, <laughs> I mean it, that was already my favourite city in the States anyway. Yeah. Just because of, you know, its whole kind of musical heritage and the, and the fact that it's not really like anywhere else in the state. Mm, right. it's a, um, it's a place, isn't it? So I kind of I kind of fell in love with that place a long time ago. Mm. But I've never had the opportunity to spend, you know, a, a, a year there and kind of re it. and really get immersed in it. Yeah. Um so I just you know, I got to play with loads of people and um people that I, you know, made friends that I've I will mm. remain in touch with, yeah, you know, and, and can kind of because it's quite a small town as well, um, that it's, it's relatively easy to sort of hook into the, the music scene if mm. you're around for a while. Yeah, you know, and, and if you yeah, if your face keeps showing up. Yeah, like, exactly, and and if so. and if you're respectful and and you you play well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, then yeah. then people go, oh, okay, yeah, this guy will yeah. will have this guy up again. You know? yeah, yeah. So it's quite easy to, to sort of like. Um, Get you know, get yourself in there, yeah, cool. which is great because because now when I go back, I can just like there's people that I can play with immediately. Oh, yeah. yeah. So did you get to the point of doing gigs over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and how did you find when I went to Memphis, which was only a brief visit, so I didn't really get a full picture of the music scene, but it seems like the blues scene had the regular gigs over there were very long, so they'd be like four hours. Yes. And is that what it's like? Yeah. So you just have to play all night. I think it, yeah. it's a very different type of music. You see, I think it's it is. Yeah, I, I kind of like it was a bit of a it was a bit of a rude awakening that the first time that happened, like the four hour gig. Yeah. Because I'd been I'd been hired <laughs> by a band called Big Alan the Heavyweights. Right. Who who um, they're a long a long established band in, in the Louisiana area, right. and and uh, so he he got me on the gig to to play harp. Mm. And it was on uh, Frenchman Street in, in in the French Court of New Orleans, and and all I knew was the kick kickoff time was like ten o'clock, so I'm thinking probably ten till midnight. Yeah, you know, we will be done for midnight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and we're still we're still stood still playing at like one thirty. I think yeah. went right through till two, yeah. like no break either. No really. break at all. Yeah. yeah. So like, and did, <laughs> did you get to sort of sneak off for a song and? 
use the toilet. Um, and... Yeah, but very quickly. I yeah. mean, I had to make a sort of dash for that, you know. Yeah. Um, but like. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I just wasn't kind of, I wasn't mentally prepared for, for, the, for, the, for the four hour gig. The by, the, by the end of it, I, I was like, I was exhausted. Yeah. Okay. But then, that, like you said, that kind of is the norm. I did, mm. I did quite a few, certainly quite a lot of three hour gigs. Yeah. And three to four is kind of, it's kind of a norm, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's quite something, really. I, and I think, I think that explains a lot to me about why sort of British blues sounds the way it does and American blues or what you know what's come out of blues and developed in Britain is you know and ended up with things like punk mm. where you've got that kind of everything's go 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 yeah, especially yeah. when that that kind of three bands on a night you each get 20 minutes yeah. and you you know you're fighting for fans yeah thing comes from which is a, that whole vibe of like okay lay back we've got Four hours. Yeah, to do. lots of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep going on that solo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll sing for four hours. <laughs> yeah, and I, like that, that. That that was one of the things that really surprised me when I went to Memphis. I was like, oh, I get it. That's why the music sounds different. Yeah, it's a completely different vibe. Yeah, that's, that's true. Actually, it's take your time. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Long, lots of grooves. Yeah, lots yeah. Of sitting on it. Don't tie yourself out in the first hour. No, you know, that's it's, it. pace yourself. It's a long haul. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I did, yeah, of course, quite fancied going and doing it, but at the same time, I don't think I've got the energy these days. I think it like I think it's okay, like say, if you kind of if you're ready for that, and yeah. like, you know, you you just pace yourself differently, don't you? Yeah. But yeah. 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 Well, that sounds brilliant. And so, um, before Crosscut Soul, what did you do then? There was Paul Boy. Uh, how far back are we going? How far back do you want to go? What got you into music? What was the first record that you uh, that that your ears went? Oh, that's music. I get it. Um, I like if we if we're going with sort of like the, I've pretty much always played blues or blues adjacent music. Yeah. But I would blues and roots. I guess I would say. I would yeah. say. Um, so the kind of stuff that got me, the, the kind of revelation for that, I suppose was. Um, I chanced upon the album BB King London right. uh, in my dad's record collection yeah. when I was probably about 14, 15, some, mm. some, somewhere around there. And that was the record. It and, just got you. Yeah, yeah. And that, that remains my favourite BB King album um, to this day, actually. No, every night. Yeah, out. yeah, and it's like it's not his, it's not his slickest record. No. Like he just no, hired hired some people. You probably familiar yeah, yeah. with it, right? Yeah, uh, you know, he just hired some people. There's there's quite a roll call of kind of famous people on there. Yeah, but we're, they were basically just kind of jamming around. It's quite loose. Yeah, uh, and it's that was kind of the one. It just let me go. Yeah, I can't, so, that's yeah. that's the noise that, yeah. I, that I'm interested in. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. the sound of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. But and so and then. When when did you first pick up the harmonica? Is that you being a, a, your only instrument? Uh, yes, play? that's always been my main instrument, and around the same time actually, mm. um, because there was a couple of there's a couple of passages on that album, um, only short um, little passages of of harp on there, and that immediately made me go, Ooh. that yeah, I want to make yeah. that noise. Yeah, <laughs> how, how do I how do I sound <laughs> I like that? that yeah. yeah. So I got I started playing harp shortly after that actually. Right. Um, yeah, and I've been that's been my main instrument ever since. And did you? Uh, did, were you lucky enough to have the right guidance when you went into the music shop to buy a harmonica, or was it just like did you end up with one of those multiple hole Chinese monsters? Oh, the tremolo ones. Yeah. No, I managed to avoid that pitfall. Um, <laughs> I think, like a lot of people, I went for the one I bought. Uh, the Hunter Blues Harp. Yeah, Bl well, it says blues. Because it? it says blues harp on it. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, therefore, I'll, that I'll, must be the right one. I'll blow that, and it will sound like yeah. the, it will sound the like the record. And of course, it didn't. And I thought, well, what's going on here? Yeah. And then it's been a life a lifelong sort of pursuit. <laughs> yeah, tr still a... <laughs> trying to make still. trying to make that happen. Yeah. yeah, but of course, it, like, well, I mean, the, what happened with me when my brother bought me a harmonica. And, in C, and he was the game Blues Harp, I think it was, mm. and he was sensible enough to ask the advice of somebody in the shop. 
And then I had to go through my dad's record collection and try and... I got a friend who played guitar to... I had a, a mixtape of harmonica music. And I was like, I want to learn all these songs. And made my friend sit down and I wrote down what key they were all in. And then my C harmonica went with that one, that one and that one. Yeah. And then I could play them. And I, that was like... It, took, it seemed to take forever to work those things out at that age. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And with that... You know, without the internet as well. Yeah, of course. Just sort of old school learning, wasn't it? <laughs> How yeah. do I do this? Yeah. yeah, like when you know, you would sort of you would put the record on and 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 copy the lick and then put the needle back. Yeah, and, and, and play again. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever like, did you have the little Sun Glover book? I did have that book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tony <laughs> Little Sun Glover, and I wish I don't know what's happened to it. I don't know if I, I think gave I've got it a copy somewhere or lost it in a move or something. But I wish I still had that. Because it's got this real like hipster voice, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's the way it's written, it's really funny. Yeah, it is really um, funny. Yeah. But I, I lost my copy. But yeah, I, I I picked that up and sort of devoured that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, there were some uh, some great tunes. So then, what was your what was your first time playing with other musicians? How did that? How did you make that happen? Because um, that was probably I was very briefly at sixth form college. Mm. And it was briefly as well. Uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and we got together a little band there that we called Trouble in Mind. Right. Um, and the first proper gig, pro- you know, actually yeah. an actual performance yeah. for people, yeah. was that was probably that was probably it. Oh, yeah. And a little we, we kind of hired a little um, a little hall in town, and got you know people from the people from the uh, college along to come see us and stuff like yeah. that. And I'm sure it was terrible, but like, no, uh, but it was fun. But also wonderful. I yeah, to, yeah. Uh, I love it. I love seeing bands do that sort of thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's like, uh, you know, yeah. kids doing their first gig is always quite an amazing thing to, yeah, to and behold. It, and it's sort of, you know, it's a bit of an epiphany, isn't it? And like, yeah. if it gets you, then you're never going to yeah. stop doing that, are you? Yeah, yeah well, when we did, we used to do the rock schools at Factory Street, and yeah. you would have a kid that would do their first gig, and some sometimes you just look at them and you go, yeah, they'll see you again. Yeah. You know, and then You'll be back. five years down the line, uh, you see them in a, in a band, yep. rocking it out, then you're like, yeah, they, they got it. They, yeah. They always, they had it before they came. Yeah, know, yeah, so. totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I always felt like I had to work at it. Never came easy to me, music. I don't know. Right. But um, you can probably tell. <laughs> But um, it's yeah, it's it's a great thing. It's completely taken over my life, hasn't it? I yeah, know. I think I think it does, doesn't it? Like if if like you say, if it gets you, then mm. that's it. Then isn't it? That's it for yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Like that's not, it's never going to leave me. You know? no. yeah. So you also do a bit of writing, don't you? Uh, yes. You, so um, like sort of reviews and stuff like that. And, yeah, I've um, done all sorts. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, freelancing for the music press. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit less of it now because um, the print industry um, and sort of music it's journalism, it's yeah, it's kind of just dying really. And mm. most of the magazines that I was spreading my workload around mm. have closed mm. uh, in the last um, in the last few years. I would say, you know, stuff like I was doing a lot of stuff for um, Planet Rock. Mm. And um, country magazine and the blues magazine, which like which was an offshoot of classic rock magazine. Yeah, I still miss the blues. I thought that was a great mag. Mm. So I did a lot of stuff for them, and they've all gone. So yeah. uh, I mean, I'm keeping my hand in a little bit. Um, uh, you know, with some of the uh, blues publications as well. Oh, cool. Um, but I'm kind of doing less of it at the moment. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, I've always, I've always written to an extent. Um, for for a while, you know. So, mm. Yeah. No, so the, do you feel like that's the same sort of? Does that inform your? Obviously, informs your lyric writing. How does that? You do? You, does it? Is it from the same well, or do you almost go right? I'm writing an article. That's one brain, and I'm writing a song. That's another brain. Obviously, it's. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a. It's a different thing. Sort of writing critically if you mm. like or write in a feature piece uh, or an interview interview piece on a band mm. um that you know that's that's kind of a like you said different it's a bit, skills yeah, yeah it's a, it's a separate brain but w- whereas for me um lyric wise 
what, a lot of what I'm quite interested in, um, sort of quite downbeat Americana. Mm. Um, in, they're the sort of writers that I'm attracted to. I always like to cite, you know, people like Roman Carver mm. and Willie Valortin, who, who um, is a novelist, was also in the band Richmond Fontaine for a while. He's now in the Delines, I think. Right. Hit that kind of writing that's kind of like about kind of people a little bit on the fringes, mm. um, a bit Southern gothic in places. I tend to draw from that. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like a different thing, I think, those two. Yeah, that's your kind of... Yeah. The sort of fantasy world, as it were. Yeah. The lyrical world. Yeah. That's, like I say, a lot of it... I think, yeah, a lot of it comes from um, from novelists that I'm interested in, mm. rather than... Um, uh, you know, rather than much copied kind of yeah, blues lyrics, lyricists. Yeah. I can't, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, did, you didn't wake up this morning. No. <laughs> I didn't wake up this morning. No. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I had a brilliant idea of trying to thought while you were saying that, and then. Uh, it's gone. And I made a pithy joke. And it's, <laughs> it's out the window. <laughs> So what the, the, there are three other songs that you've uh, you recorded with us. What um, yeah? What, what were they? Um, so we did we did Siren Song as mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we also did um, by way of Fat Sam. Oh yeah, no, I like that. Um, Fist on Fit and God, what's the other one? Oh, Problem and Remedy. Problem and mm. Remedy being the being the title track from our most recent album. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's like I'm, I've heard that quite a lot on the sort of social media side of things, and that's that's good. That's getting out there. It feels yeah. Like it's kinda... And again, that was like it. That lyrically, that came from sort of that's that sort of Americana, -y, slightly darker. Mm. Um, yeah. Stuff, I think. Yeah, I, I thought. Uh, I thought they're all they. They're all they've all got a good hook to them. And they all feel like they've got a sort of vibe and sit together, and that's really nice, even though they're very distinct. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, because that that's you know, it's all about kind of the music being quite groovy as well. I think. Yeah. And. Um. Someone like Chris Whitley, who who I'm a big fan of. Mm. Especially like, like early albums, like you know, Dirt Floor and things, and, and his whole uh, approach, which I which I liked, was that you wanted to keep. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly how we said it, but like it was to keep like the fairly groove based, not that complicated uh, structure of blues music, mm. but marry that to um, lyrics, which were perhaps a little bit less. Um, Classified with the blues, yeah, you know, yeah, something a bit, a... Um, a, you know, quite, a quite, yeah, quite sort of literary influence. Mm. I like that idea. Yeah, so, it is, yeah, yeah. So, so keeping the music definitely kind of groovy and, and mm. hooky. Yeah, not losing sight of that, but no. but um, but kind of doing something a little bit uh, a little bit different lyrically. Yeah, it's worked. It I hope well. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, like it, it seems to be. Um, Keeps it interesting anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, uh, in your writing process with putting together those songs, what do you do, how do you communicate those ideas to to your writing partners? Um, it tends to be a little bit of a, like, th throwing stuff around, really. I, mm. I will always have, like, I tend to make notes, yeah. Uh, even if it's just phrases or a line that I like, mm. and it, that, that as I'm sure you know that can come yeah. from anywhere. Kind yeah, of, yeah. If you hear something, you go, "I'm having that." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, I always have that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I've got quite a lot of that stuff to to um, consult, and then it's usually me and Tom that work out the bones of the stuff. So Tom will have like um, 
a groove or an idea or something that it'll, it'll kind of put to me and then it's just about how it feels, mm. I think. And then I can go back and say, well, okay, this, I feel like this might, feels like this might work, you know. Yeah. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes you have to write something completely, completely new, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it depends really, I think. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, how, you, how do you do it? Yeah, I think it, I th- because so much of it for me, at least the process of the song coming together, so I'll have some sort of lyrical ideas and stuff that kick around, and but then it, the groove on the guitar will sort of inform it. Dick so that's it. why I was sort of asking how you find that those bones that you hang it on sort of thing. Yeah. It, it's a, it, it's, that seems like the challenge for me in your situation, where how do I... How do I create this thing that I can then hook the the stuff on? Yeah. So, but obviously you do. You know. Well, it's just co- you know, it's collaboration, isn't it? That's, yeah, it is, and I, and I think yeah, it's certainly it's certainly the two of us initially, and then yeah. it becomes like wider after that. Yeah, of course. Um, grows and yeah becomes its own thing. I've yet I've yet to I don't know how successful successful I would be if it was like if there were four of you all in a room trying to construct something. Make something, yeah. That would seem more complicated to me somehow. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, the sort of jam band. band yeah. Match, yeah. I know that's how a lot of people do it, but for me it's mm. it has to start quite small. Mm. Yeah, and grow out. And, and come that, yeah. and come from that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I'm quite you know, there's that thing of like I'm quite um, self-conscious as well, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Initially, too terrible, yeah. initially, and like I've got to a point now with one person where I, I, I and it, it's took taking me some work to get to that point hmm. where I can ex- try stuff. Yeah, and just uh, something comes in your head and it comes out your mouth and it's fine. Yeah, because you don't think about censoring yourself. Yeah. yeah, and and not be yeah. and not be afraid of it, like of, of it sounding stupid or going yeah. wrong. Yeah. Whereas if there's more people, then, then I have to go through that whole yeah. process again because like mm. <coughs> that stuff just fills me with with dread, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. It's that's that, that's another reason yeah. why it has to for me it has to be a small thing. Mm. Yeah, no. trust. Yes. Trust has to be there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes you can try songwriting things with people and it just doesn't doesn't quite click because working. you're not opening up. Yeah, like yeah. That's, I don't know quite why Yeah. that works in some ways and not in others. Yeah. Yeah. It's much easier. I, I must admit, I do, do enjoy the sort of producer uh, kind of um, role because you can step in and look at something and go, ah, well, I see where all your blind spots are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and of course, like, you yeah. know, yeah, that that always is much, um, you know, much easier easier thing to do. So uh, for me, anyway, mm-hmm. the actual starting from scratch with nothing is the blank page. Yeah, it's very very challenging. It is tricky. Very challenging. Yeah. yeah. So, are you out and about doing many gigs with Dust Radio? Yeah, much coming up? Um, we've got some. We've got some. Um, we're doing the Colm Festival on one of the main stages this oh, year. Yeah. I've been playing that festival. Yeah. For years, I'm, so, you know, yeah. I'm sure you got. Excuse me. Um, Leeds Blues Club as well. All right, that looks good. Which uh, that's that's a really good club actually. I hope mm. they. I hope they keep going. They're getting some really good names there. Yeah. Um, so. What else are we doing? We might be doing the Chap and Allison Festival in Leeds as well. Uh, we we play a little bit closer to home as well, like Salby Bridge. Yeah. The puzzle. Yeah, I always like playing the puzzle. puzzle yeah. In fact, we've got that coming up. I think in a couple of weeks. Oh, um, and I'm blank. Of course, I'm blanking on other stuff now. Of course. Yeah. 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 No, you're supposed to. <laughs> And we'll be at the Palladium yeah, on yeah. the seventeenth. It's ladies' night. Are we doing? You've you, you, you just, you just reminded me actually. What there's there's uh, the Hollow House Blues Club. Yeah. Um, which they have at the Lending Room in Leeds. This is a new kind of a new venture, oh, I think. Cool. And they're they're kind of really, you know, they're really kind of pushing the whole thing and attracting some decent names. But the reason you reminded me of it is because mm. we had to do that whole thing. Part of the um, 
part of the uh, contract yeah. was uh, we need five videos from you. You right. know, um, that we can stagger like when you're yeah. three weeks outside of the gig, three weeks away, yeah. uh, the, the night before. or, or You've got a sort of public promotion and publicity schedule that you've got to yeah, yeah, yeah. sign into. And so, so it's the same kind of little scripts and stuff. Yeah. And, and it's like, that, that's another thing that makes, makes me kind of go. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get your ticket. So all of that's... <laughs> All of that stuff, yeah. And that's yeah. what that's why you remind me of it. But I mean, I I get it. Yeah, I mean, no, it works. Yeah. If it works, and, uh, yeah, and so so they're really trying with um, the word. Much rather they did that than nothing at all. Yeah, some, totally. Some people, totally, totally yeah. Things, yeah. So so that should be. Um, I've seen some of the people that have been playing that one, and that looks like a good gig. So Brilliant. we've got that coming yeah, up as well. It's yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. There's a few things opening up in the blues, the blues world at the moment, venue wise, and. Mm-hmm. People are quite into it, I think, and I'm quite enjoying that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. We'll be uh, hopefully getting a few more a few more blues things going on here with the uh, live at Trapdoor. I think we'll have Pat Fulgoni on soon. I oh, hope I've started yeah. talking to him about that, so yeah. that'll be good. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a host of others that have yet to be disclosed, but, um, but yeah. Um, well, thanks for coming in and talking to me. It's thanks been uh, an absolute along. pleasure, and thanks for coming and playing for us. That was really great. And yeah, we really enjoyed it. Go and watch the videos, do all that, and subscribe to our channel, and go and find Dust Radio, and do all of the following and subscribing and everything that's do that. associated with that. Yeah. Is there a particular place they can find you best? Um, well, I would steer to. I would normally steer people to Bandcamp just because, like, that supports the, the yeah. independent artist. Yeah, so I, you I do get th- some of the money that people. Yeah, we might see. see <laughs> we might see some money. So that that's it is a really good platform. But of it course, um, you could find us on the usual places like yeah, Facebook, media, yeah. Instagram, on Spotify, and most streaming platforms. Yeah, we're out, we're out, we're out there. Excellent. Yeah, that's radio. Paddy Wells. Thanks. Thank Alex. you very much. Thank you.